Okay, shalom, shalom to you all out there, shalom. Especially to the most high soulful elect. Shalom, shalom to you all out there. All right, so let's get this started first and foremost. Let's start off by giving our honor, thanks, praise, and glory to our heavenly Father and his only begotten Son, and which is the most high, and the Son of Christ, who this world foolishly and ignorantly calls Jesus. Secondly, much love and support to all of the brothers and sisters out there that's of this faith, no matter if you're part of a camp or not, no matter if you're new to this faith or not, so long as you continue to help push this biblical truth and all faith and sincerity to all of our people out there with eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to understand, preferably towards the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent. Once again, this is your brother Yahweh Ayasharaf from the Sea Souls of Israel, the Rocks of Offense, and also the Ambassadors for Righteousness once again. Dropping you another quick video. So, brothers and sisters, what this video is going to be about is how the Most High only deals with people who's truly seeking and serving Him. All right. So, the reason why I say that is because you got a lot of false prophets out here, man, and also prophets and sisters, whatever they call themselves, right? So, you so-called religious churchgoers, okay? Any anyone that's in any kind of false religion, man. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be of Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, you know, any kind of religion that's worshiping idols, man. Roman Catholics, okay? The Most High ain't dealing with you. And the reason why I say that is because you're not truly seeking the Most High. You're not keeping the Most High's ways, man. You know what I'm saying? So you can't deem yourself a so-called Christian, which is a follower of Christ, by the way, and a believer of the Most High God of the Bible, and you're not truly seeking Him. You're not keeping his law, statute, commandments. So you can't say that the Most High is dealing with you and giving you so-called divinity or divine messages to send to the people. And you're not even keeping his law, statute, commandments. You're not even interested in keeping his law, statute, commandments, all right? But you want to claim that the Most High God of the Bible is dealing with you, okay? That's what you call a false prophet, man, okay? A hireling, all right? You're deceiving the people, man. All right, you got a lot of these people out here, they making all of these videos, especially on social media and YouTube, talking about, oh, I'm the divine prophet or the divine prophetess, you know, and the Most High gave me a message to give to you. This is what he told me to tell you, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, on the low, you're a witch, you know what I'm saying? You're practicing witchcraft, you're a wizard, all right? You're not even dealing with the God of the Bible, you're dealing with some other deity, following vain false philosophies okay but you're trying to deceive the people talking about the god of the bible was dealing with you okay and you don't even keep the sabbath you don't even keep the dietary law okay you don't even keep the high holy days and the rest of the laws to the best of your ability but you want to claim that the god of the bible was dealing with you like really okay so that's what really prompted me to do this video man because there's a lot of false prophets and prophets and sisters out here, man, talking about that the Most High God of the Bible is dealing with them. And they're not even interested in keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, man. All right, so we're going to get right into it, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let the scriptures speak and chop y'all up, right? So I'm going to place my phone up here right quick. Okay. Let's see, let's set it right here. All right, this will probably work right here, right? Hopefully that you can still hear me because I think it's sort of covering the speaker a little bit, right? So I'm going to try to set it up here the best way I can to keep the speakers free. All right, so hopefully that y'all can still hear me. But yeah, man, this is what prompted me to do my video, man, because all over social media and all over YouTube, you got all these so-called prophets and prophetesses and preachers and pastors talking about the most high god of the bible is giving them divine messages to send to the people now don't get me wrong you got a lot of people out there that's really sincerely seeking the most high you know even you know your so-called pastors in these churches you know you got a lot of pastors out there that's actually you know they're, they're serving the most high you know now if they're keeping the laws of the most high and the commandments well you know that's that's up for debate. You know what I'm saying? I'm not too, I'm not really 100% sure of that. But, you know, there's a few passes out there that I can vouch for that honestly seek the Most High. You know, and they actually push keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. But a majority of these so-called pastors, preachers, 
prophets, prophetesses, man, especially on the social media and YouTube and all of the internet, right? The Most High ain't dealing with you if you're not pushing, keeping his law, statutes, commandments, man. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get right into it, man. And the first one that I'm going to go to is in the book of 1 John chapter 2. And I'm going to start at verse 3. And it reads, let me see, hold on. I think I can sort of put it right here. Okay, there we go. All right, so here we go. We're in the book of 1 John chapter 2. two and I'm going to start at verse 3, and it reads, And hereby we do know that we know him. Who's the him that's being spoken about here? That's the most high God of the Bible, the creator of all things, right? The God of Israel, okay, which is of the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent, right? Verse 3 again from the top. And hereby we do know that we know him if we, what? Keep his commandments, okay? What is the commandments? The law, statutes, the commandments given in the Torah, okay? Which is the book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Leviticus, okay? The book of Joshua, Numbers, all right? The law, statutes, commandments is given in those books, man. Okay, and then you have examples of keeping his law, statutes, commandments throughout the scriptures, right? Verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a what? A liar. Okay, so all of you so-called preachers, pastors, prophets, prophets assist, man. All right, claiming that the Most High is giving my messages to give to the people talking about oh god told me this god told me that you know he gave me this message last night to give to the people you know what i'm saying this is what god told me to tell you this is what god said all right and the most high not even dealing with you okay because you have no interest in keeping his law statutes, the commandments and rehearsing the righteous acts whatsoever all right so you're deceiving the people man okay Verse 4 again from the top. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Verse 5. But whoso keepeth his word, okay, what is his word? That's these scriptures, man. Right? You're spreading the gospel of the Most High in his one and only true begotten son, Hamashiach, right? In him verily is the love of God perfect, okay? So if you're spreading, keeping the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High and spreading the gospel of Hamashiach, then the love of the Most High is perfect in you, man. Okay? In continuation, hereby know we that we are in him. Okay? Which is the Most High. Verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked okay so this is referring to all of the people who deem themselves so-called christians right and which is a follower of christ by the way okay so and then when christ was sent to this world he was sent back to the nation of israel to instill keeping the law statutes, the commandments back into the nation of israel man okay so if you want to deem yourself a so-called christian which is a follower of christ then you got to be pushing keeping the law statutes, the commandments man in your so-called religious churches, man. Okay? He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walk, which is Hamashiach. Verse 7. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you. Okay, so this is John saying, I'm not writing any new commandments unto you. Okay, so like your so-called religious church go like to say, your so-called Roman Catholic, they love to say, oh, well, we're, we're under a new covenant and the laws are done away with. We don't have to keep those old laws of the Torah no more. We got new commandments. The only commandment now is just to love. Just love, love, love. Love everybody. No matter if they're in sin. No matter what they're doing. No matter if they're breaking the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High. Just love. Just love everyone, right? So this is what they say, man. But this is what John says, right? Brethren. I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, okay, what's those old commandments? That's the most highest laws, statutes, commandments in the Torah, right? Let's read that again from the top to make it clear. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the what? The beginning, okay, the beginning of the Torah, all right? 
and the creation of the world. You can actually say that too, right? The old commandment is heard, all right, which is these scriptures here. And it can be referred to Hamashiach, all right? He's also known as the word too, right? In continuation, which ye had heard from the beginning. Okay. Let's go to chapter 3 in the book of St. John. Shalakia, 1st John. And I'm going to start at verse 4. And it reads, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Okay, so this is letting you know exactly what sin is and what transgression is. All right. Let's read that again for all of the people who haven't heard clearly. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Verse 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. That's speaking about Hamashiach, all right? So that goes for all of you so-called OT-only Israelites, man. All right? Who like to say, oh, Hamashiach sinned. Oh, Hamashiach wasn't perfect. Oh, Hamashiach didn't exist, okay? You, there's no need to believe in him, all right? He's not better than Moses. He's not better than King David, all right? But what it says right here, man. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So when it says he was manifest to take away our sins, that means he was sent to us to get us to repent, to instill the law, statutes, the commandments back into us, man, so we can uh, repent of our sins, man, so we can have remission for our sins. All right? That was the purpose of Hamashiach during the first uh, coming. Okay? Verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, okay? So if you're truly a so-called Christian as you claim to be, for all of you religious churchgoers and you Roman Catholics, all right? If you truly deem yourself that, then you shouldn't be sinning, okay? So in verse 4, it tells you exactly what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the Most High's laws, okay? So if you're truly abiding in Hamashiach, then you shouldn't have no sin, no willing sin, Okay, sometimes you sin without knowledge, all right, because you might you might not be knowledge of a certain law that you're sinning in, all right? So I give you that. But if you're willingly sinning, then you're not a true disciple and follower of Hamashiach, okay? If you're willingly breaking the Sabbath, if you're working on the Sabbath, shopping on the Sabbath, cooking on the Sabbath, all right? Leaving your house, going more than 100 yards away from your house, that's a rest day, man. Okay, according to the book of Exodus, chapter 16, you're supposed to be resting on the Sabbath, man. And also in the book of Jubilee. Okay. So you can't deem yourself a Christian and abiding in Christ if you're willingly sinning. You're willingly eating that bacon sandwich, that BLT. You're willingly eating that pork chop sandwich. All right. You're willingly eating your Canadian bacon. Okay in Denny's or IHOP or whatever, all right? You're willingly sinning, man, so you can't call yourself a Christian. So basically, it's about time that we take that back, man. You know what I'm saying? Us true followers of Hamashiach, right? We got to take that back, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we're the real true followers of Hamashiach. All of these so-called watered-down Christians, man, these so-called prophetesses and prophets and pastors and preachers, man, they don't really follow Hamashiach El Shai, Okay? Verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Okay, so who that's speaking about? That's speaking about Hamashiach, right? Verse 8, he that committeth sin is of the devil. All right, so you're a deceiver, man. That's all devil means. It's a deceiver. Okay, people who go around deceiving people, misleading people, leading them astray. You know, leading them off the straight and narrow, okay? Feeding them all of these vain philosophies and ideologies of the world and other false religions, okay? Teaching them about Hinduism, teaching about Buddhism, teaching about Jainism, okay? Uh, worshiping your ancestors, all right? All of these, these false, vain philosophies, man, and dogmas, okay? Worshiping false deities, all right? So that's what the devil is, man. 
worshiping Virgin Mary and Roman Catholicism, the image of the beast himself and uh, religious Christianity. Okay. And the reason why I say religious Christianity, because they're really not followers of Hamashiach. All right. They're just churchgoers. Okay. So let's read that again. Verse 8 from the top. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of the Most High was manifest. Okay. Which is Hamashiach. And he might destroy the works of the devil. So this is what Hamashiach came to do. He came to destroy the work of the devils. Okay. Which is plural. Even though it's singular right here, but there's many devils in this world. It's like I said, a devil is just a deceiver. Okay, it's not what religious Christianity taught us. Like it's some guy that's in hell, you know, what uh that's red with horns and a pitchfork. Okay. There's nowhere in the scriptures that describe the devil looking that way. With a horn and a pitchfork and a tail and, and tormenting people down in hell. Okay? There's nowhere in the scriptures that says that, man. Okay, so devil just means the deceiver of the earth. And anyone can be a devil. But there are a such people in this world that's known as the devils of the earth. And they're going around deceiving the whole earth and causing all of this falsified floods everywhere. And getting people to believe in all of these lies and stigmas and dogmas, man. Okay? Verse 9. Whosoever is born of the Most High doth not commit sin. Okay? So if you're born of the Most High which is the religious church goer. They like to say born again Christians, right? So if you're renewed in the most high, as Paul says, you're a new creature, man. All right. You're going to speak new things. Okay. You're going to be speaking the word of the most high. You're going to be spreading the gospel, going to be pushing, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to your people, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent, in which the law, statutes, and commandments, and the ordinances of the most high was given to, right? So you're a new creature, man. Right. If you're born of the most high, what it says here, whosoever is born of the most high doth not commit its sin for his seed remaineth in him. OK, the most high seed remaineth in you, man. All right. And he cannot sin because he is born of the most high. So you can't sin, man. You can't willingly sin if you're born of the most high. OK, you're not supposed to do that. And if you do, then the Most High is going to deal with you. He's going to orchestrate your demise from that point on if you see that you're willingly sinning. Okay? You're willingly breaking the Sabbath. You're willingly breaking the dietary law. Okay? You're not keeping the laws as you're supposed to. All right? You're not rehearsing the righteous acts amongst your fellow brethren and sister. But you want to deem yourself a believer of the Most High and a follower of Christ. That makes you a hypocrite, man. And the Most High and Christ hate hypocrites, right? verse 10 and this the children of the most high are manifest and the children of the devil okay so that's how you can tell the difference all right for someone who claimed that they're following hamashiach but they're not keeping the law statutes, and commandments all right they're not pushing the gospel correctly okay they're going off their own mind and their own thoughts saying oh god gave me gave me this divine message to bring to you okay like the most high is only dealing with them all right, all of these false prophetesses out here, man. Like, come on, really? Verse 10 again from the top, man. And this, Slakia. Let that truck go by. All right. Hopefully that you can still hear me. And this, the children of the Most High are manifest, and the children of the devil, okay, the deceiver. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. So if you're not doing righteousness, then you're not of the Most High, man. You can't call yourself a believer of the Most High and a follower from Ashiach if you're not rehearsing the righteous acts, man. All right? Neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay, so as it says here, if you're not rehearsing the righteous acts towards your own fellow brethren, man, the people of your nation, which is so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent, which is of the 12 tribes of Israel, if you have any hatred, if you bear any hatred towards your own brother or sister, man, without cause, this is because you have a jealous and envious spirit. 
you have a slandering spirit, okay? Just a natural malice spirit, right? Then you're not of the most high, man. And I take offense to that personally. You can't say that you are the most high and you a follower of Christ. And you have hate in your heart for your own brother without cause, man. Hate in your heart for your own sister without cause. Slander. False accusations, man. Right? Personal. Okay? And this, the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of the most high, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay? Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 4. Okay, we're in the book of Exodus, chapter 4. And I'm going to start at verse 10. And it reads, And Moses said unto the Most High, O my Lord, my Elohim, right? My Adonai. I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, near since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Okay, so this is Moses talking to the most high asking them hey you know why are you choosing me to serve you and do your work okay i mean I, I don't even have much confidence in myself you know i have a, a a slow tongue i'm slow of speaking you know i'm not eloquent as all of these other people out here all of these false prophets all of these false preachers you know those are the eloquent ones you know those are the ones who can easily talk to the people and maybe even deceive the people you know, why you want to choose me, right? So this is what Moses is saying. Verse 11. And the Most High said unto him, Who have made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb? Okay, now the dumb, you know, our people like to misconstrue that word, man. You know, dumb, just like I brought out in one of my videos, actually a few of my videos, the word dumb actually doesn't mean stupid or foolish. Dumb just means that you're not able to speak or you're unwilling to speak up for yourself, okay? If any wrongdoing is being done to you, or if you witness anything that's being done wrong, you know, you're quiet about the situation, okay? You know, you're one of those people that say, oh, I, I didn't see anything, you know? I mean, it, it was right literally in front of your face. You've seen it going down, but, you know, if someone asks you, yo, what happened? You know, oh, no, nah, I didn't see anything, man. I, I, I you know, I don't, I don't know what went on, okay? Or if something happened to you, and you know you're you're too afraid to speak up or you won't speak up for yourself okay dumb don't mean like you're stupid or foolish or ignorant all right you know you can't use those words interchangeably all right you can't substitute the word dumb for ignorant or stupid okay ignorant means that you just don't know of something but if you know about something then you're not ignorant no more now you're stupid if I tell you to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, if you deem yourself a Christian or a believer of the Most High God of the Bible, and then you still refuse to do so or don't care to do so or don't even care to hear, okay, that's what makes you stupid, all right? So that's the distinguishes between dumb, stupid, and ignorance, man, right? So a continuation what Moses is saying to the Most High, right? And Moses said unto the Most High, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither herefore to, or heretofore, Salakia, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. Okay, who's the Most High servant? Moses, right? But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Most High said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or deaf? Or the seeing or the blind? Have not I, the Lord, okay, so the Most High does all these things, man. The Most High controls all things, man, right? That's why a lot of these so-called religious churchgoers, man, they need to read the scriptures, man. You know, they think everything is done carnally, okay? They think that the Most High isn't sending his judgment forth towards the people, man, okay? Verse 12. Now, therefore, go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say, okay? So, this is what the Most High is basically doing with me now. And the reason why I say that is because I'm teaching his word. I'm coming straight from the Bible, man, as you can see right here, right? Coming straight from the Bible. The 
book of Exodus, chapter 4. Okay? So, the Most High sent in His Holy Spirit, man. All thanks and praise due to the Most High for that. To do this word, man. Okay? So, this is when you honestly can say that the Most High is dealing with you. When you come in directly straight from His word, man. All right? Not your own opinions, not your own thoughts, not your own mind, your own carnal thinking. All right. Now, some other vain, false philosophy and dogma and ideology that you had or that you learned from somewhere. All right. From some idol later. OK, you coming straight from these scriptures here, man. All right. Verse 12 again. Now, therefore, go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. Verse 13. And he said, O my Lord, my power, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt send. And the anger of the Most High was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. Okay, so the Most High knew that Moses' brother Aaron can speak well. He knew that Aaron was an eloquent speaker, right? But he chose Moses. Okay, so that just goes to show that the Most High, he doesn't choose the most eloquent speaker, the one who have a high vocab, okay? The one who's flashy, the one who likes to flaunt, the one who likes to show off. You know, the Most High is not dealing with the proud like that, man. Not to say that Aaron was proud, but it's quite clear here that Moses said that Aaron was a more better eloquent speaker, right? And a more quicker thinker, right? And this actually some scriptures of encouragement too. You know, a lot of people can use this right here, you know, to let them know that the Most High doesn't always choose the strong and the most eloquent, the most fanciest, the most richest, man. The Most High is with the poor and the repentant and the contrite of spirit, man. All right. I did a video on that too. You can check that out, you know, when you get the time. Verse 14 again from the top. And the anger of the Most High was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know what he can speak well. I know that he can speak well, Salakia. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart, which is his mind, right? Verse 15. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall say. Okay. Verse 16. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be, to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of the Most High. All right. So the Most High is letting them know that he's going to deal with Aaron through you. I'm going to speak to you, Moses, and you're going to speak to Aaron, and Aaron going to speak to the people, right? Because he's the eloquent speaker. You know, he know how to gather the people onto him and listen to what he have to say. All right? Let's go to the book of... Still in the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Okay? So that's another example to let you know that the Most High is only dealing with those who serve him. As it says in the book of um, Exodus, just since read in the fourth chapter, Moses said unto the Most High, thy servant, okay? The ones who's truly serving and seeking the Most High, all right? The ones who's down in a spirit, who's of a contrite spirit, you know, you know, who's poor, who have less confidence in himself, okay? That's who the Most High is dealing with, man, all right? So in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and I'm going to jump down to verse 18, and it reads, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. So when the people which is the 12 tribes of Israel, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent, right? When they seen the Most High on top of that mountain, they was afraid, man, all right? They knew that the Most High was all about business, man, right? 
this is the kind of fear that our people must have of the most high nowadays. And then maybe they'll act right, right? Verse 19. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not the most high speak with us, lest we die. All right. So you have all of the people that was in the wilderness, man, knowing that they was in willful sin. It was like, yo, we don't want to deal with the most high because we know that we in sin. But you, Moses, we know that you are serving of the most high. You, you keeping his ways, you following his commands. So we were ready to have you go speak to the most high because if he speaks to us, we all done. Right. Because we know that we're living in sin. We came out of Egypt. We got Egyptian wives. We got all of these heathen wives. We didn't bear children with people that's not of Israel, right? A lot of them wasn't keeping the laws properly. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the people knew that it was in sin, right? So this is how the people should be today, man. If you know that you're not keeping the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments, you know that you in willful sin. How are you, how do you build up the credit to even speak to the Most High? Knowing that he can send judgment forth towards you to deal with you, to orchestrate your demise, all right? See, a lot of our people don't have fear in the Most High, you know what I'm saying? And you could blame this society because this society, they teach people to worship vain, false philosophies and dogmas, okay? Worship false idols, okay? Worship Buddha, worship Shiva, Krishna, Madhava, and Hinduism, okay? Virgin Mary in Roman Catholicism, the image of the beast in religious Christianity, Lucifer himself in these secret societies, man, in fraternities and sororities, okay? This is what this society pushes. That's why our people don't have faith in the Most High. A lot of our people are turning atheists too and agnostics, all right? Not even believing in a God. You believe in science more than you believe in the Most High, man, right? That's crazy, okay? Believe in the science. This is what our people say, man. That's bugged out. That's crazy, man. We supposed to be the most spiritual people in this world, man. And a lot of us are turning atheists and agnostics. All right. Oh, I believe there is a power, but I'm not too sure if it's a God. You know, I'm not too sure if it's a God of the Bible or, the, or you know, but I, I believe there's there's someone up there. I'm not too sure, but there's there's a power up there. Like, you know, just this is a straight agnostic, man. Crazy, right? So this is what this is, man. Verse 19 again from the top. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and he will hear. Okay, so they're asking Moses to entreat of them because they know Moses was a true servant of the Most High, right? But let not the Most High speak with us lest we die. Verse 20. And Moses said unto people, fear not, for the Most High is come to prove you, meaning he's going to prove that you're going to keep his ways, that you're willingly to keep his law, statutes, and commandments after he saved you out of the, the, the Pharaoh king's hand, right? Of Mizraim, which is known as Egypt. Fear not, for the Most High is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your eyes and your faces, that ye sin not, okay? That ye sin not, okay? So as we read earlier in the video, in the book of 1 John, chapter 4 it lets you know exactly what sin is which is the transgression of his commands right so the most high came to prove them okay that ye sin not verse 21 and the people stood far off and moses drew near unto the thick darkness where the most high was okay so that's what the most high deal man he deals within the thick darkness of the clouds man Okay, so even today, when you start, if you look up in the sky, man, and you see those clouds getting dark and dark, that's when you know the Most High is near, all right? Let's go to chapter 6, still in the book of Exodus. Okay, we're in the book of Exodus, chapter 6. And I'm going to start at verse 27. 
and it reads these are that Aaron and Moses to whom the Most High said bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their armies okay so right there that's letting you know that the Most High is only dealing with the people that serve him man which is Moses and Aaron right let's jump to chapter 7 in the book of Exodus starting at verse 1 and it reads and the Most High said unto Moses see I have made thee a God to Pharaoh okay so that's letting you know man that the Most High made us gods upon this earth right he's still with the children of Israel man okay so all of you Egyptologists out there all you Kemet people who like to call yourself gods you know the Most High is letting you know here in the scriptures, man, that he made Moses a God, which was a Levite, which is a descendant of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negroid descent. All right, verse 7 again, verse 1 from the top. And the Most High said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Okay, Aaron the prophet, the true servers of the Most High, man. Those are the only ones that could be deemed a prophet, man, if you're keeping the Most High's commands and keeping his word and his ways, man. All right? You can't be a willful sinner and calling yourself a prophet or a preacher or a man of the Most High is dealing with you, giving you divine messages to give to the people, man. Okay? Verse 2. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee. And Aaron, thy brother, shall speak unto Pharaoh that he send the children of Israel out of his hand. All right. So let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, in continuation of this word prophet, right? So we're going to let you know how the Most High feels about false prophets. Okay. I'm going to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18. And I'm going to start at verse 15. And it reads. The most high thy power will raise up unto thee a prophet. From the midst of thee, of thy brethren, okay, who's the brethren? The 12 tribes of Israel, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent. Of thy brethren, like unto thee, unto him ye shall hearken, okay? So only of the children of Israel should our people be hearkening to, man, all right? Everyone else is just deceiving you, Okay? So a lot of our people have a problem with that. You know, they don't want to listen to their own fellow brethren and sister. But if someone else from another nation teach them about this Bible, they're going to believe it and listen wholeheartedly. Right. And they could be deceiving the hell out of them because they haven't read the scriptures themselves. They haven't studied to show they self approve. OK, they haven't proved all things through the scriptures. But what this person is going to tell you is something from their vein, mind, philosophy and heart. And the heart is wicked, according to the scriptures, who can know it. But, you know, our people have this habit of naturally believing someone that's of another nation. But their own fellow brother and sister could be coming straight from the scriptures like I'm doing right now, straight from the Bible. OK, and they still say, oh, I don't believe you. That's your own belief. Now, that's the definition of stupid. Right. Let's read that again, man. Verse 15. The Most High, thy power will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. Okay? So that's the Most High speaking, man. You got to hearken on to your own fellow brethren and sister when they're telling you this truth, man. All right? can't be listening to pastor joe olstein okay or any other pastor that's deceiving you right 
Let's jump down to verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command them, okay, which is the law, statute, the commandment to the Most High. All right, so that's the only things that the true servers and followers of the Most High should be preaching, is keeping these law, statute, commandments, and keeping the ways of the Most High and following his one and only true son, Hamashiach. And which is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments still, right? Verse 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, okay, I will require it of him, meaning the Most High is going to deal with you. All right? So all of you so-called churchgoers, you know, you religious churchgoers, you, you atheists, you agnostics who don't believe in a God, all right, the Most High is going to deal with you, man. Okay, the ones who would rather listen to Joel Osteen, all right, or any other prophet that's not of the children of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is so called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent, the Most High is going to deal with you, man. He's going to orchestrate that demise from that point on. Okay, verse 20. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak. Okay, all of you so-called divine prophetesses and prophets, the one who claim that the Most High has given them divinity, but they're not keeping the laws, they're not keeping the Sabbath day, not keeping the dietary law, you know, not honoring themselves as a part of the nation of the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? Still want to refer to themselves as African-American, black, Negro, okay, colored, all right, verse 20 again, but the so-called prophet, all right, which shall presume to speak a word in my name saying, oh, this is what God told me, he gave me this divine message to give to you, all right, you making a whole hour video of falsified information that you claim that the Most High gave to you, right, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak or her to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, okay? Even that prophet shall die, all right? So the Most High is going to deal with you, man. He's not playing, okay? So you want to speak a name, you want to speak a, a, a word in the name of a false god, okay? Uh... Allah, Muhammad, okay, in Islam. You want to speak a word from your so-called ancestors, all right, in African spirituality, okay? You want to speak a word in the name of Madhava, uh, Shiva, Krishna, and Hinduism, okay? You want to speak a word in Buddha. You want to speak a word in the image of the beast himself in religious churchianity, all right? You want to speak a word from the word of Mary in Roman Catholicism, okay? from your own vain heart and mind and philosophy and dogma, all right? This is what the Most High said about you, man. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, okay, plural, even that prophet shall die. Verse 21, and if thou say in thy heart, which is your mind, how shall we know the word which the Most High have not spoken? All right, so the people are asking, how can we discern the difference between someone who's truly serving the Most High and someone who's deceiving us, right? Their eloquent speech. Verse 22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Most High, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Most High have not spoken. Okay, so you got a lot of people out here, just like I said, on social media, YouTube, whatever, Instagram, TikTok. They out here spreading this falsified divinity messages. And none of it come to pass. Every time you turn around, you see a video of someone saying, oh, you're going to have a huge windfall this week. By the end of this week, you're going to have a, a, a huge bank account. All right. Oh, you're going to get that brand new house at the end of this week. You're going to get that brand new car. All right. You got all these, <laughs> these falsified prophetess and prophecies, man. 
saying all of these things and six months go by and you still poor, right? So this is what the Most High said about them, man. When a prophet speak of in the name of the Most High, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Most High have not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt be afraid of him. Thou shalt not be afraid of him, Salakia. So you shouldn't be afraid of that prophet who's truly seeking the Lord and serving the Most High and giving you his word, okay? Because he's there for you, all right? So if we say something, you know, even in a couple of my videos, man, you know, I've even spoke about the situation that's going on now, you know? I said that like a year and a half ago, two years, man, and it's, it's exactly going down now. Okay, now that's not to say that, oh, the Most High is only dealing with me. Of course, he's dealing with other brethren and sisters who's truly serving and seeking him and keeping his law, statutes, commandments, and believing in Hamashiach. But what he told me, could the Most High deal with, with each and every one of us individually, right? He told me how it's going to go down. And look, it's exactly going down like how I said. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say you have to avoid certain things so that you could avoid other things. Okay. So if they telling you that you have to do this, okay, and then you get diagnosed, then you must do that, all right? And then on top of that, if you're that, if you're categorized as that, and you have to go home and quarantine yourself, then basically you're going to get everybody else that, right? So now when they go back to their job or when they go back to their schools and they get you know what, then they're going to be diagnosed with you know what, okay? So now everybody's home, you know what, okay? And now everybody's have to receive the you know what, all right? I've said that, okay? And look how it's going. It's going exactly the way it said, you know? Just like I said, like almost a year and a half ago, two years. But, you know, a lot of people don't take heed. You know, that's why you have over... 70 or 80 million 100 million people you know what already okay but you know i mean that's the, that it's the will of the most high man the most high controls all things right you know just like i read earlier in the book of exodus um chapter four you know he the one that make of blind he the one that make of the sea he the one that make of deaf dumb okay intelligent so if you're not a true sheep of the Most High and a true seeker and follower of his ways, then it is what it is, man. It's the will of the Most High. You know, what can we do about it? The only thing that we can do is just tell you about it, right? It's up to you to follow it. We can't force anything on you, right? So, you know, it is what it is. All praises to the Most High, right? Let's go to chapter, as a matter of fact, you know what? Hold on one second, Israel, all right? Let's go back to Exodus. No, as a matter of fact, now I'm not going to bring that out. I'm not going to bring that out. Okay. Let's go to chapter 17 in the book of Deuteronomy. I think I want to bring that out right there. Yeah, I'm going to bring that out, right? We're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy still, chapter 17, and I'm going to start at verse 2. And it reads, If there be found among you within any of thy gates, okay, within any of your nation of people, right, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent, right? And I'm going to keep on reiterating that, right, just to make it clear. Just to let you know what people is being spoken of here, right? Let's go to 
if there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Most High God thy power giveth thee, man or woman, that have wrought wickedness, okay, in the sight of the Most High God your power, and transgressing his covenant, okay, so that's the definition of the wickedness, all right, you transgression his covenant, which is his laws, the keeping of his laws, statutes, commandments, right? Verse 3, and have gone and served other gods, all right? You gone and serve Allah and Muhammad and Islam. You gone to serve Madhava and Krishna and Shiva and Hinduism, Buddha and Buddhism, okay? The image of the beast and religious churchianity, Virgin Mary and Roman Catholicism. You know, you serving all of your false deities and these fraternities and sororities and secret societies, right? Let's read that again. And have gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun, the moon, and any of the host of heaven, okay, which is also known as the stars and the planets. All right, so you got a lot of our people out there doing that, man. They're worshipping the moon. They're worshipping the sun, okay? They're saying that the son of God is the sun, the S-U-N of God, right? Got people worshipping the moon, the moon goddess in Egyptology, which is Queen Isis. Okay, and queen just mean whore if you really dig into it, right? So you got people worshiping the sun and the moon. You got people worshiping Nimrod and Tammuz, okay? Nimrod is the sun. Tammuz is the rebirth of the sun, okay? Semiramis, which is his mom, is the moon goddess, okay? You have the, the constellations, the stars, okay? A, a lot of our people was into that, you know, following astrology. Okay, now there's nothing wrong with astrology because I find it to be quite true according to, you know, personalities that's giving during certain times of the year that someone is boring, but you're not supposed to be following them, okay? You're not supposed to be looking up in the newspaper in the astrology section and it tells your, 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 your zodiac sign or your sun sign, oh, it says to do this, or it says to stay in the house today. It's going to be a bad day for you, all right? Now, you're putting an idol or, or an ideology or a philosophy in front of the Most High, which you shouldn't be doing, man. You're not supposed to be doing stuff like that, okay? That's when you're in sin, when you start to follow what that says, okay, in astrology. Or if it tells you, oh, when you're driving down the street, make sure you make nothing but um, a, a majority of left turns wherever you go. Now you, you're driving down the street and you're making a majority of left turns wherever you go. You make like eight lefts and, and two rights or whatever. You know, just giving examples, right? So, you know, these are the crazy things that's being said in astrology in these newspapers or magazines or whatever. And you got a lot of people, a lot of our people are following stuff like that, man. You're not supposed to be doing that, okay? Now you're putting someone else's ideology before the most high, right? So that's what happens when you're you're worshiping the host of heaven, which is the stars and the planets. And then also you have the sun and the moon, right? And have gone and served other gods and worshiped them, either the sun or the moon or any of the hosts of heaven, which I have not commanded. Verse four. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it and inquired diligently. And behold, it be true. Okay, so this is what a lot of our people like to do, man. You know, they like to serve other gods. And then this also serves as a purpose of looking at two sides of a matter, man. Okay, you just can't jump the gun. You just can't jump out of the window and jump to a conclusion when you see something that don't fit your narrative or your thoughts. And then you, you just want to just involve yourself in the situation, man. But right here in verse 4, it's letting you know that you got to look at both sides of a matter. You just can't jump the gun and take a side of someone. This because they may be a friend or a loved one or someone that you know. So now you're going against someone else because of that, that purpose. But that purpose that you know or your loved one or your friend or whatever, they can be 100% in the wrong, right? But you, you want to automatically take their side just because... They're special to you, right? But this is a lesson to be learned here, man, in verse 4, right? As it says, And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, 
and behold, if it be true, okay, so if you're going against someone and what your so-called loved one told you something was true, this is the reason why me and this person have conflict, then you could involve yourself. Now, you're not really supposed to repay evil for evil. The scripture says that, but you can try to defuse the situation. Okay? So you just can't jump the gun just because you see someone that you know in a situation and now you want to involve yourself and now both of you in trouble. Someone can get seriously hurt. Someone can get killed. So the next thing you know, one person is dead or two and then the next person is in jail. All right? That's three lives lost. Okay? Because you wanted to take the side of your loved one by jumping the gun without diligently seeking the situation out. Right? So this is why the most I said this the most. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing certain that such an abomination is wrought in Israel, verse 5, then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing, okay, which is serving other gods, man, all right? Unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone him with stones till they die. Okay, so this is how serious the Most High takes idolatry, man, and adultery, spiritual adultery. All right, if you're of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negro descent, in which the law, statutes, commandments was given to in the ordinances, this is how serious the Most High takes idolatry, man. It's the very first commandment of the Big Ten. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. So the Most High is serious about that. Thou shalt not make on to thyself any graven image, okay? No Egyptian ankh, no cross, okay? No pyramids, all right? No Buddha statue, no Krishna statue, no Madhava statue, a, a statue, Shiva, no Virgin Mary statue, okay? Even your, your, your idols on your so-called holly or folly days, as we call it, right? Your Christmas tree, your mistletoe, okay? You have your, your, your baked ham, which is an abomination to the most high's eyes. Your baked duck, all right? Your turkey, okay? Your Easter bunny with the Easter eggs, all right? So you have all of these idols, man. You can even make people an idol, too. And a lot of people don't realize that. That's the reason why you have shows like American Idol. You got people called celebrities, okay? Which derived from the word celebrate. Celebrate that person. He's a celebrity, okay? So these are, are man-made idols, man. And the Most High doesn't take kindly to that, all right? That's why me personally, I think the Most High that he took that away from me. So I don't idolize or worship anyone. I don't care how famous you are. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how long you've been in the entertainment game. It is what it is, man. If you're not pushing the word in the most high, hey, it is what it is. You a sinner in my eyes. I'm not going to idolize you, man. Right? So let's read that again, man. The most high is serious about this, man. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman and shout stone him with stones until they die. Okay, so, you know, when we was brought out of Egypt and we was being taught to keep the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High, during that time, you know, under our own rulership, we were to follow those laws. But now we're not in our homeland, we're in the wilderness. You know, anything that's outside of your own homeland is considered a wilderness. All right, so right now we're in the wilderness. We're in captivity, you know, under rulership of another nation. So we can't follow our laws. All right. But if you go to certain places in the world like Yemen or uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, they, they keep their laws over there. You know what I'm saying? They don't do too well to idolatry over there and whoredom and all sorts of other sin. OK, now that's not to validate them and say, oh, they're keeping the Torah, they're keeping the laws of the Most High. No, they're still worshiping the false God because they think that the Most High is dealing with Ishmael instead of Isaac. They think he's the God of Islam instead of Israel. 
All right, that's an idol. Okay, according to the biblical scriptures, man. Okay, those are the Ishmaelites. Yeah, Ishmael was a son of uh, Abraham and Sarah, but he wasn't the chosen seed. Okay, the chosen seed was Isaac, man. Okay, and Jacob, and then down to the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, that's how that went, man. Okay. So in continuation, let's go to Deuteronomy 18. I'm going to go to the book of Deuteronomy 18, and I'm going to start at verse 10. And it reads as follows. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, okay, all of these false prophecies that you claim that the Most High is giving you and dealing with you, but you're living a life full of sin, right? Or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, okay? Verse 11, or a charmer, or a consultant with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, okay? A necromancer is someone, like I was saying before, is into African spirituality, calling on their ancestors instead of the Most High, all right? They like to claim that they're following messages that's downloaded onto them from their ancestors, okay? Your ancestors is gone, man. You're not speaking to your ancestors. You're speaking to a demon, actually, when you're doing stuff like that, man, all right? Your ancestors is gone, and they're asleep right now, and they're awaiting judgment from the Most High, all right? Verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Most High. All right, so you are an abomination unto the Most High if you say that you're calling on your African ancestors. All right, you abomination if you're a witch or a warlock. Okay, you're calling on the wrong gods, false idol gods. Okay, if you're not dealing with the Most High, you're dealing with something else. That means you're dealing with an idol. All right, and idols is of the devil. Okay, which is the spiritual demon Satan. Okay, you have a terrestrial Satan and you have a celestial Satan. Okay, we deal with the terrestrial Satan here in this life, but they're controlled by the celestial Satan. Okay, let's read that again in continuation. Or a charmer, okay, which is your eloquent speaker. All right, your so-called false prophets and preachers and prophetesses, all right? Or a consult with familiar spirits, okay? So a lot of people consult with familiar spirits, man. You know, they, they want to know about how certain people doing that they're stalking, okay? They want to know about the future, all right? You're not supposed to be learning about these things, man, okay? You know, you, you're dealing with people that can tap into the left side, which is the demonic side of the Most High. And you you, you want to spiritually spy on someone, okay? You got people that's doing that, man, within our nation, man. This, like the scripture says, man, times is going to wax worse and worse, and sinners is going to get worse and worse, man. It ain't going to get better. It's going to get worse, all right? You see that on a daily basis, man. People getting shot down, right? You know, guys killing their kids, killing their wives, and vice versa. The, the mothers killing the daughters and the sons, stabbing them all up. I think I done seen like five or six videos, man, within a two-day period. Killing the kids. Or the husband killing the wife, or the wife killing the husband. You know, it, it's getting wicked, man. It's getting worse and worse daily, man. All right? But, you know, you fools out here, I still want to party. I want to get drunk, get high, hang out. You're not being an observer of the times that's going on right now. Letting you know that you're in the last days, man. Judgment is being brought forth. You know, it's crazy, man. Right? Let's read that again. Hopefully that y'all can still hear me. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the most high, your power, your God, your Elohim, which is the God of Israel, right? And because of these abominations... 
the Lord thy God, which is your power, does drive them out before thee. Okay, so the Most High is letting you know again that he don't deal with people that do that stuff, man. Thou 